have ever woken up in the morning with a lot of pain in one eye, that eye starts to water, you might be dealing with a recurrent corneal erosion. And this can happen in people that have had a corneal abrasion or a scratch in the past, or they might be dealing with dry eyes. So in this video, we're gonna go over exactly what that is, why it happens, and what the treatment is for it. Let's focus in. Hey, how are you? This is Dr. Neil Guyman, Dr. Eye Guy. And I actually already released this video, but I got a lot of great comments mentioning a certain treatment that I didn't have in the video. I originally shot that portion of the video, but I didn't give that portion to my editor, so it didn't make it in the video. So I had to make the hard decision. Do I just leave the video, maybe mention the treatment in the comments or the description, or take the video down and put it in there? I decided to take the video down, put it in there because I just wanted this video to be thorough and helpful. So I reshot a couple things and I hope you like it. And thanks for all those people that commented on that video. So what is a recurrent corneal erosion? That happens on the cornea, the clear dome on the front of the eye where we see through, where people have contacts, where they perform LASIK. And the cornea is actually made up of different layers and those layers are stuck to each other kind of like Velcro. The top layer, the epithelial layer, if that layer comes off because it's not stuck like Velcro, it exposes the nerves and the underlying la layers which causes the pain and the symptoms. Now, on top of that, what stinks is the new tissue that comes in to replace that might not adhere that well to the layers either and they're more prone to be ripped off again, causing the recurrent nature. Now, the symptoms of a recurrent corneal erosion can include, like I said, a lot of ocular pain when you wake up, light sensitivity to the point where light actually hurts the eyes when you're exposed to the light, blurred vision, watering, and red eyes. Now, why does this happen? Who is at more risk of getting a recurrent corneal erosion? And we can break this up into three groups. The most common group is definitely people that have had a mechanical trauma to the eye, a corneal abrasion, either from a fingernail, a foreign body, a paper cut, tree branch, and this accounts for about 45% to 64% of the people that get these erosions. The second group are people with corneal dystrophies right here. Now their cornea or their layers of their cornea might not work quite right, so they're more prone to get these erosions, and this accounts for about 19 to 29% of the people that get these erosions. The rest of the people fall into a third group. This can include people with diabetes, but a big one are people that have dry eyes or meibomian gland dysfunction, ocular rosacea. They tend to be more prone because the surface of the cornea is really dry to have that erosion happen. A lot of people like to classify recurrent corneal erosions into two different forms. Microform, which are smaller erosions, heal up fast, but might happen a little bit more frequently, and macroform, where the erosions are much bigger, takes longer to heal, more symptoms, but hopefully doesn't happen as often. So we're breaking up the treatment into two different categories. What's the treatment if you have a current erosion, and what the treatment is to prevent an erosion. Now for a current erosion, first line of defense is your preservative free artificial tears and you want to be using them a lot, every one to two hours. Now check the description, I have a link to the video I made about my favorite preservative free tears and I'll put links down there for you as well. The other thing is to use a gel or an ointment at night and this is really important and this is the part that I didn't get into the other video that there's actually an ointment called Miro 128. It's over the counter. It's a hyperosmotic agent, meaning it has a high concentration of salt. So it's really good at bringing out water or helping edema or swelling of the cornea. And that can help the layers of the cornea adhere a little bit better. So it's really helpful for people that have recurrent corneal erosions. And because it's over the counter, I'll put the link in the description so you can check that out and check out the pricing there. And this also could be put in the preventative category as well. A lot of people use Miro 128 just to prevent themselves from having another erosion. You also wanna make sure that you're drinking plenty of water, stay hydrated. Now, if you have a recurrent corneal erosion, you definitely wanna go into your eye doctor, get the official diagnosis, treatment from your doctor. If you're in a lot of pain and you're light sensitive, they may do a few things. They may patch your eye. They may also dilate your eye with something called cyclopenylate. This will dilate your eyes for a whole day. Now, they may also give you an antibiotic eye drop more as a preventative thing because you really do have an open wound there, so you don't want that to be infected. 
and they might also give you an anti-inflammatory steroid drop to help decrease the inflammation that you might be getting from this erosion. And then also just to help with the pain, they may tell you to take ibuprofen. One other treatment that I definitely wanna mention is your doctor might use a bandage contact lens. Just like you can wear contacts to clear your vision, you can also wear contacts as a bandage. This will help shield your cornea, protect it from the air, protect it from your own eyelid. It'll make it feel better, make it heal faster and make it heal better. And so this is a pretty common treatment that you can use for recurrent corneal erosions. So don't be surprised by that one. But this also leads me into what can be done to prevent recurrent corneal erosions because bandage contact lenses can also be used to prevent these erosions. Now, if you're someone that really does suffer from recurrent corneal erosions and it happens quite frequently, a bandage contact lens might be a good option. There was a study done where they treated people with recurrent corneal erosions with bandage contact lenses and they had them wear them for three months. And 75% of those patients, those people, didn't have a recurrence after that for at least a year. Another more advanced treatment that I wanted to mention is the use of amniotic membranes. It's an amazing membrane that you can put on the surface of the eye to heal the eye from many different conditions. I actually did a full video on it if you wanna check out the link in the description if you wanna learn more. But people can use amniotic membranes for both when you have the erosion currently or to prevent erosions as well. Now a lot of the other preventative treatments kinda of circle around dry eye treatments. You wanna keep the surface of your eye as lubricated as possible. One treatment is punctal plugs. You can block the tear drainage holes in the eyelids to keep tears on your eyes longer. I actually did a video about that and I'll also have a video about bandage contact lenses you can check in the link below. And just like preservative free tears were important during an erosion, also important when you don't have an erosion. You wanna keep the surface of your eyes as lubricated as possible. Preservative free tears during the day, gel at night. You can also use moisture chamber goggles while you're sleeping to keep the moisture around your eyes a whole lot better during the night. And I'll put links in the description if you wanna check those out. Studies have found that doxycycline, an oral antibiotic pill, can actually help with meibomian gland dysfunction and dry eye symptoms, also helping with recurrent corneal erosions. Also, Restasis, it's a prescription eye drop cyclosporin that helps reduce inflammation, helps dry eyes. Now, some people are very unlucky and have very large recurrent corneal erosions even with trying to prevent them and they're constantly on treatment using artificial tears and medications. And so there are a few surgery options out there to help with that. One surgery is called stromal puncture. They actually take a 25 gauge needle and poke it into the cornea. Now this sounds barbaric, but this actually causes a fibrotic response and causes scar tissue in those areas where they poke the needle. And this actually helps adhere the layers of the cornea a little bit better to reduce the epithelial layer from being ripped off. So it actually works. Sounds crazy though, but it actually works. Another one is called diamond burr polishing, where they actually take a diamond burr and clean off the epithelial layer. So any areas where they had an abrasion and maybe there's edges where they weren't so clean and flailed off, they'll actually take that diamond burr and clean off those areas and polish it. So hopefully it can make the next new tissue come in and have a better layer to adhere to. Another surgery is actually with a laser. It's called PTK, phototherapeutic keratectomy. And they actually use a laser to kind of do a similar thing like the diamond burr, where they're actually gonna cut or laser a clear section of the cornea so it's nice and smooth and clear so the tissue, the new tissue coming in, has a better place to adhere to and heal better. Now one possible complication from recurrent corneal erosions is haze and scarring where this happens on the cornea. And depending on where the scar is, it could cause permanent blurry vision if you have to look through that scar. Now, if you happen to scratch your cornea, you'll get a corneal abrasion and you're worried about this, definitely check out my video I did about corneal abrasions right there. I'm Dr. Neil Gaiman, Dr. Eye Guy. Stay focused.